Why is she here? How about you ask her yourself, Romeo? Good to see you, Yagami-kun. Don't worry, it's not what you think. And before you ask, she's not here to win your heart again. Win my heart again? Hold on a minute. Let's make one thing clear. We never dated. Guess I misspoke. Don't sue. <clears throat> I'm here on business. That should be obvious. Business? The prosecutor's office is pressing murder charges against Kyohei Hamura of the Matsugane family. You're involved, aren't you, Yagami-kun? Word travels fast. Nothing that happens in Genda's office gets away from me. Saori-san just can't keep a secret, huh? Not with me. We go way back. Since you were kids, right? Yep. Back to Hamura, though. They're already pressing charges. They only just arrested him. Apparently the prosecutor's had his eye on Hamura for a while now. He's just been lying in wait for the perfect moment to strike. And this prosecutor is... Your friend, Izumira. Somehow I knew it'd be him. You haven't seen that guy since the whole not guilty verdict, huh, Talk? Yep. He's probably still sore about it. Too bad Shintani's gonna be the one in charge of the case and not me. You're really never becoming a lawyer again, are you? I don't want to talk about it anymore. Genda Sensei asked me the same question. I see. Does the prosecution have any work for me? I'd be glad to cut you a discount. You know what, Yagami-kun? Hmm? This detective business really doesn't suit you. Couldn't she have just called? Think she went through the trouble for a reason? Maybe you? It's, uh, getting dark out. I should walk her back. Mafu you. Not so fast. Who are what? you? Huh? Chief Prosecutor? And Yagami-kun, what are you doing? Well, I was planning to walk you home. Really? That's so sweet. Well then, I apologize for my forcefulness. Sure. This is Chief Prosecutor Morida. And, um, you already know Prosecutor Izumida. Long time no see, Yagami Sensei. Courtroom just hasn't been the same without you around. Damn near breaks my heart. So you're defending Hamura, huh? Nope, Shintani's handling it. I'm just collecting evidence. Looks like you don't need that walk home, Mafu you. Later. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. You're not a lawyer anymore. Even after your landmark acquittal. Too bad. I only won because I was up against you. You shut your damn mouth. If it wasn't for your bullshit logic, that murderer would have been behind bars. An innocent girl died because of you. Tell me what was so bullshit about my defense then. Come on, say it. Everything! That's enough, Izumita. It's okay, Izumita-san. Uh, thanks for thinking of me, Yagami-kun. Farewell.
man, has that guy got an aura or what? If I was a chick, I'd be way into that. Not now, Kaito-san. My bad, my bad. So, what do we do? About the case? Mafuyu said they're already pressing charges. We should go to Genda's. Let Shintani know what's going on. I want you there, too. Got it. See you over there, then. What is it now? Look, just, uh, take a breather, huh? Count to ten or something. I'll give you a breather. Ah! ありがとうございました。Stay down. guys.
Stay down. Here you go. Hey, Yagami. The hell were you thinking sending Kaito here by himself? Guy acts like he owns a goddamn place. <laughs> All hail King Kaito. Just sit your ass down, would you? So, you finally have some details from the cops. Murder specifics, forensic results, even their proof that Hamura's the one who did it. That's a lot. Let's see it. But first... Hmm? Just don't forget your role in all of this. Especially you, Yagami. At the end of the day, you're just a mercenary. The one who decides how this investigation goes is me. Understand? You got it. It's your show. Now, why don't we look at those documents, Shintani-sensei? That's more like it. First up is the crime scene. Huh. Around 6 a.m., morning of December 4th, police get a call about a body in the alleyway behind a moor. The officer who rushed to the scene confirmed the corpse on arrival. Victim was a Kansai thug, bottom feeder with the Kyori clan, Toshiro Kume. Body had a few bruises, but the cause of death is pretty obvious. Two puncture wounds, straight through the eyes. The cops think the murderer used something like an ice pick, pierced right into his brain. My eyes hurt just thinking about it. Oh, <sighs> you're telling me. Looks like the murder weapon went through Kume's eyes, then tore him out when the killer took it back. Only natural to think the Tojo was trying to make an example out of him. You know, threaten the Kyore. So even if Hamura didn't do it, it's damn likely that someone from the Tojo clan did. And if we can figure out who it was, 
Hamuro will be off the hook. What? Find the real killer? That's a step too far. Priority number one is proving his alibi. We do that, we're in the clear. What the? Hmm? There's pretty much no blood anywhere near the body. Meaning Kume wasn't murdered in that alley. If I had to guess, I'd say he died in a moor. Hmm. Hey, what the? Night of the crime, an employee from another bar tossed their trash out in this alley. Around 2 a.m. Didn't see anything out of the ordinary, though. In other words, Kume got dumped sometime between 2 and 6 a.m. when the body was found. Uh-huh. Nothing was found in Kume's pockets. No wallet, no phone, nothing. Bet the murderer broke the phone. Cops tried one of those find my phone things, but came up empty handed. Guess the killer at least tried to cover his tracks. Hmm. You take a peek in the alley when you were over at Amore? Doubt there's any traces left at this point, but it's apparently just out the back. Anyway, this is Kume, just before he died. Before the killer took his eyes. Come on, don't say stuff like that. So what's the prosecution's angle on this? Well, try thinking about it in the context of the Tojo Kyori feud. Two other Kyori Yakuza turned up dead before this each with their eyes gouged out. Not a far leap to assume the Tojo's responsible for all three murders. You follow? Yep, go on. All right, this is how the prosecution thinks it all went down. December 3rd, just around nine o'clock. Right out front of Club Amor, an argument breaks out between Captain Hamura of the Matsugane family and Kume and Murase of the Kyore clan. Hamura and his thugs drag Kume into the club, at which point Murase abandons Kume and flees the scene. Hamura then locks Kume in Amor for around an hour while he and his boys beat the daylights out of the guy. Around 10 p.m., Hamura kicks everyone out, leaving only himself and Kume in the club. Up to that point, their story matches the camera footage and the testimony we have from the owner of Amor. The prosecution's story continues as follows. Once the two of them were alone, Hamura tortured Kume even more violently. Then, between 2 and 3 a.m., he drove a sharp weapon into Kume's eye, killing him instantly. Once he finished gouging Kume's eyes out, Hamura dumped the body in the alley behind Amor. When questioned, Hamura said, me and Kume left Amor around midnight. I went for a steam right after. But since no evidence can back up that claim, the prosecution doubts its credibility. 6 a.m. on the morning of the 4th, Kume's body was found. And one week later, they arrested Hamura. So they've got three things. 
the camera footage, the bloodstains in the club, and Hammer's Swiss cheese alibi. Any of those alone wouldn't be enough to get a conviction. But with all three, the prosecution thinks they've got this case in the bag. End of the day, to them, it's just Yakuza offing Yakuza. Makes sense they'd see it that way. I'm more interested in what you think, though. Did Hamura actually kill Kume? I don't know. The guy rubs me the wrong way, yeah. But I'm pretty sure he's innocent. A cunning Yakuza like Hamura wouldn't just offload the corpse in an alley like that. Too sloppy. If he really did it, forget about the eyes. You'd never even find the body. Agreed. That's uh, Arshintani Sensei. Prickliest guy in town. But damn if he's not a terrific lawyer. With you there. Um. Was that supposed to be a compliment? What? Something wrong? If Hamra didn't do it, the person who did is still out there somewhere. Huh? We've just got to find them if we want to clear Hamra's name. Ha! You think we've got the manpower for that? Tracking down a criminal like that takes an entire organized front. Best leaving that to the cops, if you ask me. My only job here is defending Hamra. Then what's your next move? Ah, uh, gonna need some more info on the victim. Remember Kume's buddy? The one who ran off when the Matsugani boys jumped him. Name's Akira Murase, from the Kyore clan. I want to hear what he has to say. About what? About what he did after he watched Kume get dragged into the club. Did he really just abandon his friend? It's hard to believe. Come on, man. Is this the time to go knocking on the Kyore clan's door? Sounds like suicide to me. I bet they're out for blood after what happened to Kume. One way or another, I want that info from Murase. Huh. <laughs> You're the ones who have to figure out how to get it. That's a deal, remember? I'm a deal my ass. Poking a hornet's nest ain't gonna get us anything but stung. <laughs> He's right, though. Come on, Kaito-san. Fine. First things first, we need to find out where the Kyore clan's hiding. They gotta have a base or something. Probably quickest to just go ask Matsugane-san. He's got all the real Tojo clan dirt. Oh, uh, I guess I'll pass. Can't exactly waltz in, being expelled and all. Yeah, I'll take care of this one by myself. I'll call you when I'm done. Here, right this way. The Matsugane are an offshoot of the Tojo clan. Not the biggest Yakuza family on the block. They're a small branch that's low on the tree. 
But the family's patriarch, Mitsugu Matsugane, is like a father to me. And Kaito-san. Excuse me. Yagami-san's here to pay you a visit. Oh, so good to see you again, my boy. Now then, feels like ages since you last stopped by. I know. I wonder why that is, huh? Could it be that you're the only one who's glad to see me? Well, you have a point there. How's Kaito these days? Staying out of trouble? He's okay. If not for that incident, he'd still be part of the family, you know. Hard to believe it's already been a year. Uh, the both of you are more or less the sons I never had. The past is what it is. True. But I'm glad to hear he's doing well. Under your watch. I'm sure Kaito-san will always feel like my Aniki. If not for you, I would have taken another direction in life. I'd be a very different person, I think. You'd have turned out just fine, my boy. Excuse me. T. So then, what would drag you back to an office where you're not exactly welcome? Hamura is giving me some grief. Is he now? I was under the assumption Genda is handling the issue. Are you helping him out with the case now? Shintani's got me looking for the Kyori clan. I just need to find them, so I can ask him a few things. Not wise, my boy. You do know they're all up in arms right now. Sure you want this? Don't worry. I just want to have a word. Does the name the Kajihira group mean anything to you? No. I can't say that it does. They're a Kansai outfit. It's... they've got a front in the city. The KJ Art Office down on Senrio Avenue. Be careful, though. There's Kyori crawling on every floor. These are Tojo Clan streets, but that's their turf now. Senrio Avenue. KJ Art, eh? I'll check it out. I know you're busy. Although, you think I could visit your office someday soon? Keep it on the down low? Yeah, of course. Kaito-san, just left the Matsugane office. The QRA are shacked up in some place called KJ Art. Huh. And that's where we'll find Morase? Not sure. We won't know if we don't check it out ourselves. You're thinking stakeout, huh? Sounds like the perfect time to give the drone a whirl. That might be our only choice. Fingers crossed. Anyway, I'll see you over there. <laughs>